let's go now to our next guest is Denise C. Munez, the Chief Sales and Marketing Officer for Everbelina Cosmetics. This, if you don't know, is the largest cosmetics company in the nation, Filipino owned, and quite a story. Their e-commerce journey has been an interesting one. A lot of ups and downs as there should be. And so an interesting story to tell it is Denise C., Chief Sales and Marketing Officer for Ever Berlina Cosmetics. Glad to see you and have you with us, Denise. Hi, Richard. Thanks for the great introduction. Hi, I'm Denise Munez, Chief Sales and Marketing Officer at Ever Berlina Cosmetics, Inc. And before I talk about, um, first off, I'd like to also thank Asia CEO for inviting us to present our e-commerce business. But before I start um, talking about e-commerce, I'd like to first introduce our company, so Everbella Cosmetics Inc. was actually founded by my dad, our president and CEO, uh, Desaldo C, in 1983. So we are actually 39 years old this year. We'll be 40 by March of next year. Um, we are present in both retail stores and direct selling. We have um, placement in about 6,000 outlets nationwide currently and about 250,000 active registered dealers. Um, our direct sales channel is actually born um in 2007 in 2007 and like any businessman uh, my dad and my uncle our ceo Sulemansi, are always on the lookout for new business opportunities and so from a humble because a humble brand starting with a nail polish line in 1983 everblend is now in uh now con now consists of a full color cosmetics line um ranging from eyes, lips, and face. We also have um, seven brands right now under Everbella Cosmetics Inc. umbrella, namely Blackwater, Caroline, Hialu, Ever Organic, Spotlight, and Hello Glow. I think um, some of you might be familiar with these brands when you see them in SM supermarkets or drugstores near you. But our e-commerce, unlike Everbella, is fairly young. Our e-commerce business actually started in 2017. Back in 2016, Southeast Asia was starting to talk about e-commerce. And this was um, the same thing across the region. But um, that time, um, the, the story of e-commerce was fairly new. And we weren't sure, people weren't sure whether it would work in the Philippines. Because in the Philippines, you have 7,000 islands. And the idea of having logistics, plat uh, e-commerce platform and that can offer logistics, um, you know, operation seamlessly felt like it might not be as efficient in the Philippines yet. So we were wondering how long it would take until e-commerce would um, really take place and take over um, the market. So um, in 2017, uh, we actually started with Tactis. It's a now defunct e-commerce platform, but it used to be big in, so in Southeast Asia. The logic of Tactis at the time was um, incorporating um, and syner synergistically, your websites, your Facebook, your Instagram accounts with an online store. Um, but the fees were very expensive and it wasn't very um, convenient for us to be partnering with our own couriers. That time, there were not that many options yet. So that didn't work out so well in 2017, but we did try. And by 20, by later, latter part of 2017, we started working with Lazada. And Lazada has since become one of the leading e-commerce platforms in the Philippines. Um, when we started with Lazada, I remember getting at least 30,000 pesos of, of revenue in a month was already a big deal. And that time, uh, my uncle, our COO, was actually very excited because he did not have a business development department yet. He didn't have an e-commerce department. So everything was basically a special project under my COO's team, our COO's team. So when my dad found out that the income was just 30,000, sabi niya, he said, what a waste of time. Like, why even bother? Because you can imagine how difficult it was for us being a, you know, a retail company. We're used to servicing orders on a per store basis. So we deliver a full chunk of orders for a store to Mercury Drug, to Watson's, to SM, and then they'll service the end customer. So now my dad's experience extremely upset with the inconvenience of needing to pack everything one at a time per order. And some of our orders can be valued at only like 60 pesos. So my dad's like, why am I um, wrapping this 60 peso item and I'm spending so much on bubble wrap, et cetera, and I have to coordinate with the courier. So he was thinking that it was not a wise um, effort. 
But my uncle, um, and also it's also thanks to the e-commerce platforms because at the time, a lot of e-commerce platforms were offering um, commissions at only zero to 1%. So my uncle is like, there's nothing to lose. Um, this is a great new business opportunity. And in my per- personal perspective, having been in the US for four years and shopping Amazon as a regular lifestyle, felt like, you know, if Amazon is doing well in the US and it's the biggest company now, then it's just a matter of time until e-commerce hits the Philippines. So we decided to push through with it. Um, and later on, we started getting involved with their campaign. So our first big campaign was actually in March 2018. It was also our 35th year anniversary. And because we barely there was barely any commissions yet for Lazada, we decided to do a big 35% off promo just to see how it would work, how it would generate excitement among consumers. And during that month, uh, during that single day, um, on Lazada's birthday sale, we actually generated 100,000 in revenue for that single day, which was a big deal for us at the time because coming from 30,000 per month, suddenly you got 100,000 in a day. So we started exploring with different platforms. We worked with Beauty Manila for a while. We worked with Shopee. Um, and now we're actually, our current active platforms are actually Lazada, Shopee, and Zalora. So over time, um, we actually also learned um, different ways to market our products better on e-commerce. So when we started, all of the products were under the Ever Belena Cosmetics Inc. store. So we had Blackwater Caroline um, and Ever Belena all in one store. But over time, when we were studying the market better, we realized that um, because our brands have different target markets, it might be beneficial for us to create our separate flagship source, which we eventually did. Although I know that there are other big companies that really consolidate all their brands into one store. So I think this is really a matter of um, a company or a brand's preference. But for us, we felt that um, as consumer products, flagship stores per brand work better. Um, so basically, that was how it went for a while. Then by 2019 was the first time my dad actually started paying attention to e-commerce. So um, our revenue started growing steadily. Um, although for our, for the most part, since in 2019, it was still only less than 1% of our business. Um, in 2019, 11-11 happened. And we generated a little bit over 10,000 orders in one day on 11-11 of 2019. And I thought that was decent at the time. I was like, that's that's great. You did 10,000 orders. But then I saw tick- I was looking at TikTok. I think TikTok was just starting that time. And then I saw that there were people, there were other uh stores showing off that their orders reach 28,000 orders in a day, 30,000 orders in a day. And I'm like, we're ever Belena and that's some random small store generating that many orders in a single day. That means you should be doing better. And so for 12-12, we aimed for 28,000 orders. But um, fortunately and unfortunately, we actually ended up hitting hitting 40,000 orders. But my uncle, in charge of operations, only prepared for twenty-eight thousand for uh, order fulfillment process for twenty-eight thousand orders. So my uncle was actually saying, "We can't fulfill the forty thousand. It's not possible." So we had to actually end up getting different department uh, people from different departments, not related to e-commerce, not related to business development, chime in and help pick and pack. So you can see, you'd see that on twelve twelve of twenty nineteen, you'd see our key accounts managers helping pick and pack. Um, We would be up till 5 a.m. processing these orders just to make sure we fulfilled everything for all the orders processed on 12-12, for all the orders booked on 12-12. So that was the first time my dad felt, hey, there's something here. If you can generate 40,000 orders in one day, if you have the the right formula, then you can actually get a lot more people to order every single day. And so moving forward from that, uh, we started really transferring our e-commerce picking area into a permanent location in our office. So before, we actually just reserved a small space in the warehouse for them to just, you know, pick and pack transfer stocks. But now we have a dedicated space, um, as you'll see in the photos uh, that I share, that I'll be sharing. Um, and over time, we'll actually also learn to improve on the processing for that. Uh, we even explored tapping the third party um, fulfilled, F, called FBL, fulfilled by Lazada where they would process your orders and charge you about 15, 20 pesos per order, uh, which turned out to be a lot for us because of our small basket size. So we eventually decided to process everything on our own again. Uh, And basically from there, uh, 
we just kept on building our brands more and working on the marketing funnel. Um, what's great about e-commerce is it's easy to track how your marketing efforts work because the conversion is instant. Unlike in stores where you have to wait for the products to pipeline, wait for them to be available, ensure, ensure that there's actually stocks on hand. By the time you do a marketing campaign, you don't know what other factors are already affecting the purchase um, decision of the customer. Versus online, all you have to do is make sure you, you get the marketing funnel in check. And if the launch happens, you can immediately see whether the launch is successful through sales conversion online. So basically, I think um, what's what I appreciate most about Everbalance e-commerce is um, I think we're lucky that we started a bit early. I'm lucky that my uncle pushed for it. I'm lucky that towards the latter part of 2019, my dad finally felt that there was a need for it. Because in 2020, when a lot of companies were just starting to to invest in e-commerce, we already had systems in place. So I think um, as a generally large company, um, having significant placement across different retail channels, uh, different retail stores, um, usually I understand that it's not normal for big local companies to already be investing their, in their e-commerce early. So I think that was an advantage for us. And learning from that, we're actually always on the lookout for um, opportunities that can boost our online income. Um, currently, our online sales are a bit less than 5% of the business, but still significant. It's still a big significant um, increase in terms of market, in, so, in terms of business share from our business, business share before of less than 1%. So I think um, that's already a, a success story in itself. And yeah. Uh, that's, I think, basically it for Everblast e-commerce. Good, Denise. And now, Denise, uh, it's a nice uh, story because you've had some ups and downs along the way. But but did you notice a, a big change during the, the pandemic? Was that a milestone uh, time for you or, or what? Uh, for the pandemic, we actually did not do any significant change in effort in terms of marketing our online store. I think in general, customer habits just really shifted to online. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, Everblana also has other brands like Caroline. And Caroline generally taps to the Gen, taps the Gen Z market. And during the pandemic, we saw that Caroline sales really uh, surged a lot, especially during the time when kids were not allowed out, when teenagers were not allowed out. Because majority of Caroline's customers range between 14 to 28, 14 to 30 year olds. So the teenager part of the target market started shopping more online. And then we could see it on Facebook when they um, asked us to make certain products also available online when they were only available in, for example, a Watson store. So we had to really um, also work on the product mix to make more products available in both channels versus just being selective about it. Okay. Interesting. And now your, your dedicated team, how many people are in your dedicated team um, roughly? Well, before I think that we only had like five people and then maybe two people, three people helping with picking. Right now we have about 25 to 30 people um, picking and packing okay. um, for the e-commerce channel. We sometimes boost it up to 50 or 60 during big campaign days just to process all the orders. Um, but for the order printing and processing, um, we have about maybe the same seven to eight people. Uh, so it's just basically printing it. And we actually automated a lot of the, um, a lot of the barcode uh, pick listing product uh, okay. processes. Okay, and and the the sales and marketing. This is you mainly, is it, or or you have some people I, with you? So uh, I handle sales and marketing, but I have a department head for retail, uh, department head for direct sales, and now we have a department head for business development, which is where e-commerce falls under. Um, and then we have a separate okay. department for marketing, so we all work together to make sure the e-commerce business flourishes. All right. Very good. Well, Denise, that is a very good story. We'll look forward to hearing about your progress as it continues. So you could say that uh, you went from 1% of, of revenues to now 5%. So that's a big increase. Still, mm -hmm. I, I know uh, maybe the CEO isn't quite as, uh, but he it's can not, certainly see the future, right? <laughs> or just future proofing. But we're really yes. looking at 
other um other sources of income for our online e-commerce platform. So we're already in talks with other um platforms online and we'll see where it goes. Correct. And with young people, it is a key thing you got to have. So, okay. Well, thank you again, Denise. That was a really good story and, and, and so nice to, to, to hear you share it. Thank you. Thanks for having me.